Mr. Ramsrup, can you describe to us what is the current status of the forestry sector and some of the major obstacles that is hurting this forestry sector? Um, <clears throat> thanks, Ronald. Um, the, the question um, it's, a, it's a very important one at this stage. This is a, a thing. Our, start, our current status of the uh, uh, the forestry sector, uh, as per se, and on and, and the whole, um, is that globally there's an economic crisis um, that we are faced with, with it, the market has been slowed down. And um, <clears throat> we are in a stage where we are trying to um, have everybody engage, every stakeholder engage. Um, recently, the uh, new government has put the, F, the Forest Product Association at the GFC board level to where we can have our import, input, direct input into the industry per se. Um, the, 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 the major obstacle that we have right now is markets. The market has taken a, a very uh, slow effect. It's taken a very slow effect on us now and it's been um, trickling down from the top right down to the bottom. Um, so from the large to the small operators has been affected and the major um, the main obstacles is market for us right now. Uh, but recently, we have um, we have put market as the top of the agenda. We have table list to our, our new board um, to put market in, and uh, we have some very good cooperation. Uh, so this is the direction we are going to. Would you attribute the low carbon development strategy as a contributing factor to the healing forestry sector? Also, government lack. Um, lack of government's participation, and how about excessive cost of production? Do you attribute these factors also to the healing forestry sector? The, 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 the low carbon development strategy is, is a very good one, and I think it's been incorporated um, into other policies of the new government. Um, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want to say negative or positive as the SEDS. Yes. Um, it is a way um, to help manage our forest and it some good strategies. Um, the, the second part of the question, um, government um, participation, participation. The, the, participation. The government um, participation in, in the forestry sector right now for us, um, as I said earlier, that they give us a very important role to play within the uh, forestry sector. Uh, previously, we were not uh, a member of the GFC board, which is the most governing body of the forestry uh, sector. Now that we have been a part of that, um, which is government intervention, um, like recently we had an issue on Green Heart where the government is playing a very critical role of support and not only one ministry, we have the Ministry of Business and the Ministry of Natural Resources and both ministers we had a meeting recently to um, find solutions and way forward how we can deal with the issues like that. And also um, excessive cost of production. Well, <laughs> um, that is probably one of the obstacles that we have right now in terms of excessive, uh, excessive cost of business because um, you have fuel prices, uh, we have poor infrastructure roads, network we have to deal with, uh, we have high spare parts of value and um, we are currently in negotiation with the government to have at least uh, a duty free, a duty free uh, on spare parts, uh, probably a level uh, uh, some amount of uh, tax reduction on fuel if we can uh, because we wanted to do more of what we call value-added adoption processing and for us to go into this direction and we need to have the government support in that direction and that aspect um, and this is some of the things that we wanted to uh, we are really in constant engagement with the government um, it has been positive uh, but we haven't made any great gateway as yet as to um, in terms of how we're going to uh, deal with it because what we have for currently in us to deal with is a lot of policy uh, which expires and uh, we are in the process of negotiating a new lock export policy but we're going to bring all these obstacles within the lock export policy so that we can have a very good meaningful dialogue with government and private sector. You talk about the um, re reduction in costs in terms of taxes. Do you think that um, it was a missed opportunity uh, that the hydro project, hydropower project didn't come on stream. Um, what this would have meant for the forestry sector? It, it would have meant it would have meant positive, but as I said, there were no clear promises or guidelines that we ought to have cheap energy. 
Um, I mean, that was part I talked about the last administration. Um, this new administration here, um, we haven't got we haven't got a, a clear picture yet with the hydro project. But they know that they are in the process of developing several hydro projects, like for example, the one in Comarca and, and, and the European Union. Um, they want to want to focus on that. Um, but in terms of having hydro project um, directly in relation to our private sector, um, it will be beneficial for us once we can provide cheap energy. So having hydro project, um, having hydro, hydro project for our country is good, but then you have to, um, to, to, to prove that it's going to be cheap energy. Okay, it doesn't make sense to provide hydropower energy and we're having the same cost. It's not going to do no benefit for the sector, the forestry sector, neither the people of Guyana. We have to work and ensure that it provides cheap energy. Superfoods brings quality dairy to your home. The highest protein and the creamiest taste with calcium and vitamins A, D, and E. Keep your family smiling with our full cream milk o milk powder made from 100% pasteurized milk. Our milk o milk powder is high quality Fonterra milk powder. Now available in smaller packages. Enjoy the high quality and great taste. Call Superfoods, located at 8 Rumveld Industrial Estate. Call 223-1034 or 223-1035. Okay, um, are you getting adequate guidance from the government? Um, we, with the, with the new board that we have, um, and I have to refer to the, the Guyana Forge Commercial Board because uh, this for the forestry sector, this is, this is the, the agency that, that is directly related to us. Um, the new chairman that we have there is a woman that was from the private sector. Her name is Justin Dow, and she is very cooperative, and she listened uh, with many of the views from the private sector because she's a private sector woman. And I think this is one of the, the, the good things that the government has done is use somebody from the private sector to be part of the chairman of the board of the Guyana Forge Commission, so that we can have. Uh, and she's very pretty open. She, our experience is very wide. She doesn't have experience in Guyana, but she has experience in the international bodies that can lobby for financial aid to the sector. Um, have you reached out to the government to bring to their attention the current status of the sector? And did you request the assistant and, assistant and participation to save the sector? Yes, we have, um, as, soon, yeah, as soon as the government went into power, we have wrote them at 12 points. A 12 points uh, note that we wanted to um, them to, to guide us and one of the, those points was to put the FP as a member of the GFC board which it did. It did honor that. Um, there are some others that we want like for example we want a deep, uh, deep water harbor, we wanted to have um, to choose the fuel and, fuel and parts, we wanted to have uh, uh, the, the uh, red tapes and so on to be reduced in terms of exporting. Um, and they're working, so we have seen that the system are in, in working. For example, there's a, like a one-stop shop for GRE. We've seen that that thing is coming on board. Um, we are still in constant lobby with them in terms of our spare parts and fuel. Um, the Go Invest is playing a very part, uh, pivotal role also in this, in this development. But at the moment, uh, we are having several engagement uh, in this topic. But um, none has been so fruitful so, as yet. Okay, none has been fruitful yeah. as yet. Except for, uh, Except for the board, the board so on. <coughs> okay. Um, should the sector fail, what do you think will happen to the many workers who depend on, on for their survival? And uh, also for for next year. Um, for the definitely, if the, if the sector failed, um, it's going to be a very trickling um, effect, and I don't think it's. With us being here, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that we are making. If the sector fails, we, we fail. We fail as an association. We fail as a, as a, as a body to lobby with the government to ensure that that um, that that um, it's, it failed. So, as this is one of our role of the Forest Product Association, that we uh, and I like the question because we, as an association, is not only looking at the large companies. Um, for the past four years, we have. We have changed our mandate at the Forest Product Association by reducing um, the membership to like small, medium-sized operators. We reduce it to um, 
to individual who are exporting. You can as an if, if the media houses, if you have an, an interest in the FPA and you want to join as a member, we are open to that. Because this is how we find it. More the more network we can build is, and the more connection we can have with people, it's be better to lobby with government to make a strong organization. And and if the sector failed, it's gonna be a very, very big trouble for the smaller operators and we knew this and uh, we are still going it, it is proof that um, it is shown because of market trend that the smaller guys are also feeling it very heavily more than the bigger guys because the smaller guys are depending sometimes on the bigger guys to help to market their products. Eat fresh at subs and salads today over 12 tasty sub sandwiches to choose from all the favorite fillings and toppings you can possibly think of made fresh every day Personalize yours today. Our footlongs are a treat. More meat, more toppings on a well-baked bun. Our Caesar salads are amazing with the best ranch dressings. So let your next stop be Subs and Salads on Sheriff Street, Regent Street and Grove on the east bank of Demerara. Subs and Salads, eat fresh. The government recently seized the operations of Baishan and now we hear in December that Denmark and Ms. Limited will be closing. What does this mean for the forestry sector? Um, they, they are, they are um, I, I can't say much on, on, on the part, but um, it took time for time that those companies to the relation to, to Guyana. I know that the bigger companies, um, as I said, the smaller companies use a piggyback on them. Um, that is probably one of the detriments that we have currently. Um, and that's why we have to go find a different avenue of how we're going to market things directly. Um, giving our bilateral agreement to China and Ghana, I think we can do that. We can market our product directly to China. Um, whatever whatever breaches was conducted within the company, the current government, I really can't see much about it, but uh, you know they have to engage. Uh, but I know that there are a lot of small companies who piggyback on those bigger companies. Um, <coughs> and that I can see for now, and that aspect. What do you think the government can do to see this up? Um, the FBA, uh, they, the, the FBA or? The uh, Forest Cross. Well, what we can do for, for us to help to, uh, to build the sector, um, we have to continue lobbying with them, with the government, um, as to what we think is um, best in terms of our policies. <coughs> policy is very important on how we can uh, engage and how we can improve our business. Um, we have to try to remove as much red tape as we can. We have to ensure that um, our policies are up to date with international speed and, and, and um, speed and, and uh, standards. We have to ensure that uh, we have a strong lobby with the government to ensure that whatever our stakeholders um, need because the forest is so dynamic and business is dynamic that policies have to be sometimes flexible or we have a system where we can able to uh, have policy be done in a more fast fast track you understand me to, to meet international standard and uh, they probably their, their, their regulations what are some of those policies you think the government should put in place <coughs> um, if we to be more specific in terms of policies, we wanted to, to, to ensure that, uh, like, let's say we deal with export. Uh, I'm just going to give an example. Um, you know, we um, the documentation process sometimes takes two weeks. You understand? If we can shorten those th times, um, GRA, G I mean, for she takes two days. Sometimes they take a chart, and that's one of the best, most organizations you can go to to have something. To do it faster, but the other end, like GRA and so on, it takes a week. If they have a system problems, it takes you two weeks. You have the officer to go into the field, and there are different people. There are different people you got to take into the field. You understand to see and um, you know we had a scanner system in place, which is no longer there. I heard this is probably bro yeah, is broken down, and those are the things that help to put a more manual system. Our system are more manual. So you want a more computerized So we want more computerized systems, system. you understand, so you can make things more effect effective and efficient. That's just one of the policies that I'm thinking about. So we, we have to engage, you understand, to ensure that this is like a one stop, um, one stop, one shop, one shop, one stop, or whatever, you understand. One stop shop. One stop shop. And so you can have an easy um, system. In terms of the forestry, you want them to, you know, we have a documentation that goes to and fro from, from Georgetown to the forest, Georgetown to the forest. You know, if we can reduce that, 
that 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 bottlenecks within that layer, and of course we're gonna have a better, uh, faster way of doing uh, export. And that's just one of the examples that I, I can give. Alright, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Rana.